technique supported a project on IPOP LMS, while Innovate UK supported the sustainable solar PV mini grids with 693,000 uh, pounds sterling. These are just a few of the funds attracted by the Faculty of Science and Technology. The AUL Energy Research Center was very, very active during the year with the visit of exchange students from Germany and collaborations from the Africa EU Renewable Energy Cooperation Program, Low Carbon Energy for Development Network, Transforming Energy Access Learning Partnership, Senior Expertise Service, EEP Africa, and last but not the least, the Soto Electricity Company Limited. Developments at the AUL International School. Knowledge continues to serve the nation with utmost credibility and quality. It has recorded huge sustained increase in popular enrollment in all its divisions. However, the school is in dire need for innovation and infrastructural upgrade. We therefore use this medium to call on well-meaning alumni of the knowledge and generally of even the National University of Lesotho to come to our assistance to upgrade knowledge. Public lectures, seminars, symposia, workshops, and conferences. The university organized several academic meetings during the past year. A special mention shall be made of the following. The Faculty of Agriculture held a workshop on livestock research as an imperative for the productivity of merino sheep and Angora goats in Lesotho from 28th to 30th of October 2020. Secondly, the Metropolitan Research Chair, which was officially launched on 8th April 2021. On the 23rd of April 2021, the chair held its first public event, a roundtable discussion titled, In Conversation with the Pension Funds Industry. The event was held virtually. Staff and student recognition, motivation, and development. Your Majesty and Chancellor Sir, our university continues to attract and recruit high caliber academic and non academic staff in order to fulfill requisite academic and professional qualifications. Similarly, various appointments and promotions were made within the academic staff at all levels and at, at all categories. In addition, we continue to offer visiting lectureship and sabbatical positions to competent staff who added value to teaching and research at the university. Across the university, a number of notable achievements were recorded by our staff members during the past one year. And these include one, Sotang Tsietsi, uh, awarded PhD by the University of Cape Town in International Trade Law 2021. Mamou Eletsi Mujalifa, awarded PhD from the Northwest University in South Africa. The adoption of an innovative means to train about 120 part-time lecturers on the use of tutor, our LMS, in teaching was undertaken. These trainings enabled us to successfully carry out our teaching and learning activities online at the height of the COVID pandemic. Furthermore, Dr. Francis Ochere was appointed as external examiner to the University of KwaZulu-Natal and the Central University of Technology, both in South Africa. And lastly, the Faculty of Science and Technology again, in the past year, continued to record very impressive citations on Google Scholar, Academia, Orchid, and other scholarly databases around the world. Our graduates made notable impacts in the promotion and application of entrepreneurship in various industrial and service sectors. Recently, an alumnus set up the prestigious Henry Shopping Mall in Maseru, a pride to all of us. At the Faculty of Law, students participated in various international moot court competitions that involved them to travel to other countries. Law students have regularly participated in the following competitions with outstanding achievements. One, the Philip C. Jessop International Law Moot Court Competition 
Africa Human Rights Moot Court Competition, COFC Moot Court Competition in Family Law, African Human Rights Moot Court Competition, Nelson Mandela Award Human Rights Moot Court Competition, Price Media Moots with focus on media law, cyber law, and human rights law. We'll see these moots in international commercial law, and last but not the least, Alfred Dakin ICA Moot Court Competition in international commercial law. Public service, community outreach, and corporate social responsibility. The Faculty of Agriculture was actively involved in impacting through field trainings that were extended to farmers in several communities in Lesotho. Livestock farmers enjoyed the following interventions. Training of farmers and youths in the art of artificial insemination techniques in cattle. Training of farmers in the detection and reporting of common sheep and goat diseases for, for prompt attention by animal health officers. Then training of farmers on production of fodder and correct mixture ratio of ingredients to produce a balanced diet for their sheep and goats, and training of farmers to recognize superior qualities, genetic merits in sheep and goats for propagation breeding in their flocks. During the same period, crop farmers were made to benefit from the agricultural productivity program for Southern Africa and wool and mohair promotion. Vice Chancellor's external engagement. Your Majesty and Chancellor, I would like to briefly state some of the external engagements and international assignments that the Vice Chancellor was invited to serve during the period under review. One, election into the Executive Committee of the International Labor and Employment Relations Association affiliated to the International Labor Organization, ILO, in Geneva to represent Africa. Two, external collaboration expert on the development of the National Industrial Relations Policy for Nigeria under the auspices of the ILO African Regional Programs. And three, external collaboration expert on the review of the Code of Conduct for private employment agencies in Nigeria with the support of the ILO who provided the financial and technical support within the framework of Fairway and ASEL Africa. This October 2021 convocation your Majesty and Chancellor, sir, I am pleased to announce that a large number of degrees will be awarded today at this 46th Convocation Ceremony. I wish to celebrate with all the graduating students. I congratulate you and your families on the successful completion of your studies. All of us are extremely proud to be associated with your achievement. My charge to the graduates, today by God's grace, our industrial students have reached another milestone. They have fulfilled all requirements for the award of various degrees that will be conferred on them at this graduation ceremony. May I use this opportunity to say to our dear graduating students that you've been adequately prepared and fortified mentally, academically, and socially to do extremely well and face the challenges in the outside world. Undoubtedly, the last four or five years have been inspiring, have been challenging, have been demanding, as well as daunting, and even rightly intimidating due to the challenges and rigors of learning, especially within the milieu of the global pandemic occasioned by COVID-19. And I say congratulations for your resilience. Out there, you have considerable uncertainties. The best way to predict that indeterminate future out there is to create something positive, create something enduring, and create something outstanding out of it. Finally, I urge you to be good ambassadors of the NUL and to make us proud wherever you find yourselves. I wish you all the very best of luck in your future endeavors. And to our parents, guidance and sponsors of the graduates. Our university rejoices with you on this memorable occasion. You have toiled very hard and deprived yourselves of certain basic uh, convenience of life in order to see your words attain substantial heights in their lives. Therefore, I pray God to reward you abundantly 
and make you reap the fruits of your labor. In the conclusion, Your Royal Majesty and Chancellor, I cannot end this address without articulating my genuine appreciation once again to the stakeholders of the NUL, the Ministry of Education and Training, the Council on Higher Education, the NUL Council, the Executive Management, Senate, and Congregation of this university for the support, encouragement, assistance, and mutual cooperation that I've enjoyed since my arrival here. May I similarly commend all staff and students for the maintenance of peace and order on the campus, their deep sense of maturity, responsiveness, loyalty, good understanding, dedication, commitment is highly commendable. Hence, I want to assure everyone that the executive management shall sustain this relationship and continue to promote a peaceful and healthy working environment for the benefit of all. Your Majesty and Chancellor, sir, great Basutos, distinguished ladies and gentlemen, once again, I give my hearty welcome to everyone here. May our good Lord protect and guide you all back safely to your respective homes. Thank you, and may God bless us all. Your Majesty and Chancellor, I have the honor to call upon the Vice Chancellor to invite you to address the convocation. Your Majesty and Chancellor, I have the honor to invite you to address the convocation. Thank you. The Right Honorable the Prime Minister, Honorable President of Senate, Honorable Speaker of the National Assembly, Your Lordship the Chief Justice, Your Lordship the President of the Court of Appeal, Honorable Deputy Prime Minister, Honorable Cabinet Ministers, Honorable Judges of the High Court, Chairman and Members of the University Council, Vice Chancellor, President of the SRC and the Student Union, distinguished parents and guardians, 2021 graduates, ladies and gentlemen, today marks another important milestone in the calendar of the National University of Lesotho where we are yet again holding a virtual graduation ceremony. This is an indication that we continue to experience unprecedented and unforeseen changes to our lives. The irrefutable fact is that we are living in an era of great uncertainty that requires us to adjust and adapt quickly to the changes imposed on us. Today is, nonetheless, a very special day for all of us, particularly for the graduates who will earn their stripes after years of hard work. Even though we may be physically apart because of the COVID-19 restrictions, your well-deserved sense of, ac of, of accomplishment and joy should not be diminished. We rejoice with you in this proud moment as we celebrate with you during this 46th convocation of the National University of Lesotho. This ceremony is yet another sign of how resilient the university can be in the face of daunting challenges. As for you, graduates, 
and your dear families. We salute you for having made it to the finish line. We cannot but acknowledge and thank the academic staff for having remained focused on their core mandate of imparting valuable knowledge to the graduates despite the enormous challenges. It is through your dedication that we are now able to dispatch another group of graduates into society and the wider world where we hope that they will use their newly acquired skills and knowledge to make this world a better place to live in for us and for future generations. We would also like to applaud the 14th Council and the University Management for their Herculean efforts in successfully managing this institution during these trying times. Chairman of Council, members of Council, we hold this 46th convocation not too long after NUL has welcomed a new Vice Chancellor Professor Isaac Olusola Fajana to head the university as its chief accounting officer. Once again, on behalf of the NUL community and the entire Basutu nation, I wish to extend a hearty welcome to Professor Fajana to Lesotho and to the NUL family. Vice Chancellor, the institution that you have so graciously accepted to take charge of is an institution with a very proud legacy. And by the grace of God, we have weathered many a storm and overcome many trials and tribulations. Our rich history will also show that this institution has produced many a leader of note and outstanding professionals who have all left indelible footprints in their spheres of endeavor. Ladies and gentlemen, on this point, and by way of example, let me tell you that it has come to my attention just a mere yesterday that one of our classmates, former classmates in the Faculty of Law at the National University of Lesotho, a certain Professor Rashi Sonna, will be on Saturday inaugurated as the first female Vice Chancellor of Walter Sisulu University. This is a very proud moment for all university alumni and for all university or members of the NUL community. And I would like to make this personal message to our friend Rashi to say that we wish her well and well done. We hope, Vice Chancellor, that under your stewardship, this revered leg legacy will be preserved 
And in addition, you will make every effort to ensure that those days of glory of Enuel and its predecessors are restored. In the same vein, I wish to thank Professor Gananelo Musito for his sterling performance during his tenure as the acting vice chancellor. I am sure Professor Musito has handed over to the new vice chancellor a sound and robust institution that will endure and overcome the challenges that may lie ahead. Ladies and gentlemen, this 46th convocation of the National University of Lesotho is not just an event to mark the end of an, academic year, of an academic journey at the university. But it is also a day on which we celebrate our resilience after a challenging and painful year characterized by the hardships of COVID-19. Students, lecturers, and other members of staff have experienced inconvenient dis disruptions. And sadly, some have suffered the devastating pain of losing loved ones, colleagues, and friends as a result of this pandemic. The last two academic years have been anything but normal. We have been compelled to move away from the normal face-to-face -face mode. Yet, despite the numerous teething problems of a new system, we are here today celebrating the achievement of another cohort of graduates who have, with grit and determination, persevered under these abnormal times. The certificates, diplomas, and degrees you receive, therefore, are a just reward for your resilience and hard work. We remain grateful to the university management and staff for the innovative ways in which they responded to the complex and fast-changing work environment. When it became evident that online teaching and learning need to be augmented, faculties had to identify those few courses that required students to be on campus for face-to-face -face learning and also for laboratory sessions and practicals. This resulted in a blended mode of teaching and learning. The ability of our university to continue to discharge its mandate despite the disruptive environment that has been occasioned by COVID-19 pandemic is a mark of resilience and agility that is worthy of recognition and praise. Ladies and gentlemen, learning institutions throughout the country have gone through a turbulent year, which has brought an atmosphere of anxiety and fear. But at the same time, this turbulent period has created an opportunity for innovation in teaching methods and practices. It has been through the collective effort of the staff and management that this institution of higher learning has had the ability to develop survival strategies that have proved invaluable at this critical time. 
without your sacrifices, tenacity, and foresight, this graduation ceremony would not have been possible. We therefore commend and applaud you for your unwavering commitment to fulfilling the university's objectives of teaching and learning. The university has taken some bold steps in venturing into some research work to find a remedy to this menace that has brought untold suffering to the world, the COVID-19 pandemic. We wish to congratulate our scientists for the advances they have made in this endeavor. And we urge them to remain focused on this noble task so that their work can bear tangible fruits for our society. We also congratulate annual staff that has participated in the activities of COVID-19 National Emergency Command Center and the recent vaccination campaigns. The role played by annual scientists in the Sankatana project that is aimed at improving oncology services for cancer patients in Lesotho is also most commendable. We also wish to congratulate the university for some new initiatives it has taken, such as the launching of the Metropolitan Research Chair, which has held public events and roundtables discussions on a number of topics of interest. Initiatives such as this one should motivate and encourage our academic fraternity to develop innovative ideas and strategies that can be used to defeat the mounting challenges that our country and people are facing. Vice Chancellor, ladies and gentlemen, I am well aware that Anywell is in the process of transitioning to the new cloud-hosted technologies in order to enhance the functionality of its primary services. I therefore call upon staff and students who have not yet embraced the current developments in technology to move swiftly because adapting to new ways is imperative for the sake of our survival. Anywell is piloting this new initiative so that, like most institutions of higher learning, our prospective students can have the ability to apply for admission online from anywhere in the world. Dear graduates, in concluding my remarks, let me remind you that during your time at NUL, you have refined your thinking processes for problem solving in multiple fields and specialities. That ability to analyze and formulate solu solutions to a given problem will be a powerful tool as you tackle the myriad of challenges that you will surely be confronted with. Remember to uphold the values of integrity and honesty as you serve your community, country, and nation with what we hope will be with unquestionable commitment, dedication, and loyalty. Remember that you are graduating in very difficult times, a period when the pandemic has brought untold devastation to our national and global economy. This has resulted in an alarming slowdown of economic activity that has caused high unemployment rates. We are hopeful that some of you 